One of the coolest things about SailGP is you get to see the best sailors racing the world's fastest boats. But as I visit the iconic cities on the SailGP circuit, I wonder what makes these places unique away from the race course. I've discovered people from all over the world striving for a better future, redefining social responsibility and driving technical innovation, redesigning how we think about sustainability. If you're interested in finding out what makes these places really tick, join me as we go beneath the surface. And this time we're in a tropical paradise famous for sailing, Bermuda. Coming up, it's an ocean special. I find out how the people of Bermuda and the government are working together to protect this island's surrounding waters. We introduce Denmark's LGP team's new sustainability partner, the One Ocean Foundation, and you can win some team gear. CLGP returns to Bermuda for the Season 3 opener in the turquoise waters of the Great Sound. Two-time champions Australia are still the team to beat on the water, but all the teams will be gunning for victory in CLGP's groundbreaking sustainability programme, the Impact League. Now, this is my second time on the island, and let me tell you, there's no place quite like it. But for all you Bermuda newbies out there, here's the headlines. Bermuda in 60 seconds. Bermuda's an island committed to green mobility, so you'll see loads of little electric cars whizzing around the island, like this one. It's a great way to get around, and it's much better for the planet than your usual gas guzzling vehicles. You might even be able to get a cameraman in the bike. Now, one of Bermuda's coolest spots is also one of its most hidden. This is a crystal cave, 130 feet below ground, and it was discovered more than 100 years ago when two boys mishit a cricket ball, climbed down to collect it, and found this place. What an unbelievable location. Now, this is pretty cool. The only source of fresh water in Bermuda is the rain. So you notice that all the roofs in Bermuda have a very unique design. They're made to catch the rainwater and it's stored in an underground tank ready for use. Somerset Bridge is the world's smallest drawbridge. It's 56 centimetres long and it takes just two seconds to cross. That's the same as a CLGP F50. And my top tip on the island is a visit to the glorious Jobson's Cove. Hi, Katja here. If you want to win some team gear, count the total number of 50s that appear in the screen here. Put your answer in the comments box below and we will announce the winner beneath the service. Good luck. As an island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, Bermuda has a unique relationship to water. I'm off to meet some local government officials and some passionate people on the ground who are doing amazing things to protect and restore our oceans. And I'm going to learn a little bit more about some of the challenges that face an island like this. But before we dive into that Bermuda story, let's rewind a little. A few weeks ago, I went to Milan to meet the One Ocean Foundation, the new sustainability partner of Rockwall and the Denmark's LGP team. And they told me how they're combining sport, science and business to drive positive impact for the ocean and islands like this. Our main focus is um, working with companies, um, corporate structures, um, on helping them in their transformation to become more sustainable, make them aware of their impact of the industry to the ocean. We believe the real fast change should come out of the corporate world, should come from companies. 90% of the ocean debris comes from inland. A key word for the industry is transparency. To avoid greenwashing, uh, companies just have to be true about what they're doing. And now the foundation is really focusing on global projects. One of them is the Ocean Disclosure Initiative. This initiative has the goal to set up a specific guidance and uh, deep diving into how companies are dealing with the ocean. And we want to organize the information and uh, transfer this information to the financial market. We have developed uh, a very solid methodology investigating with scientists what are the key issues where we need to focus. We meet uh, regularly every few months and define the scientific strategy of the foundation in order to provide uh, the directorate of the foundation with the most uh, re recent and valuable tools to analyze what could be the challenges of the next decades in the oceans. We're super excited about the new partnership with Rockpool. It's a perfect partnership because um, we look for partnerships with headquarters, with global companies, like we have with Rolex, we have with Allianz. Key partners for us because it's industry players in different segments, especially in, in, in the case with Rockpool, 
there's a very strong driver on sustainability and uh, we see many opportunities also in activating the, the partnership because of the um, involvement in the CLGP, which we think is a great platform. Because we really believe that sports as such is a great messenger. Back on the island, and we're off to meet the Deputy Premier to discover what Bermuda's doing on the front line to protect its waters, its shorelines and its people. It's the most beautiful place in the world. <laughs> it's one thing I would say, and I'd agree with that. But I also agree we are a beautiful island, though small in size, with a people who have big hearts. We love visitors, we love hospitality, and we love to share the experience of our island with anyone who wishes to come here. But we're also trying to be a place that is responsive and that is attractive to the new global visitor, which I believe is younger, more adventurous, and just wants different things from their tourism experience. We face the same global sort of challenge with climate change and the impacts that has on us as a small island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, whether it be with coastal erosion, with sea level rise, with the rise in temperatures of the oceans around us and that changing the whole nature of what's happening in the marine environment around us. We are doing everything that we believe we can to mitigate those challenges and the impacts on us. We've had impacts over our history as a island that has meant that we've had to put in place greater care and like protection for things. Resilience is built into the very fabric of how we've developed the island over time so that we have overall resilience to the most perhaps extreme weather conditions that Bermuda can experience. Each home that's built in Bermuda has its own independent water tank. So Bermudians grow up understanding water conservation, so that's built into our DNA. Young people are very passionate, they're concerned about the issues of climate and the impacts of um, plastics on the oceans, their impact of clean air, clean water, and if we don't take action now, that their future could be at risk. Okay, now I know a bit more about the philosophy of the government towards protecting the island, I'm off to meet a diver called Weldon. I've been told he's super passionate about his home waters and he's doing all he can to bring awareness to a number of issues facing the island. Hey Weldon! Hey! There he is! How are you doing? Pretty good bro. Nice to see you. What an amazing spot. Uh, we are at my favourite beach on Bermuda South Shore, John Smith Bay. My name is Weldon Wade. I am a diver, an explorer, an educator and an advocate for ocean sustainability was back in 2006 when I did my very first scuba dive. It was part of a bucket list for me before moving uh, overseas. So I said, let me try scuba diving and just to kind of see what it's all about. And it was in that moment I fell in love with the ocean. But right away I discovered threats to the ocean. So I'm like, wow, I'm falling in love with this resource that surrounds my island home. And I noticed marine debris, plastic pollution, invasive species. So over time it evolved to where I started my own NGO to uh, work to bring the community together to dive with a purpose to help mitigate threats to the, the ocean. Diving for debris, removing plastic and other things in the ocean that don't belong there is wonderful, that's a purpose, as well as culling the invasive uh, lionfish, which uh, right up until around 99, 2000 was not in our surrounding waters, but someone bought a lionfish to uh, an agricultural exhibition and they were like, hey, where'd you get this from? And the guy's like, yeah, I pulled it out of Devonshire Bay. It's covered in 18 venomous spines. In their native range in the Indo-Pacific, they're in harmony with nature, but over here, they're just voracious predators. The little fish and invertebrates don't recognize a lionfish as a predator. And when you pull up your lobster pot and you find that there's one or two lobsters in there, but it's overrun with lionfish, uh, that's, that's one bad outcome. And if a lionfish or a family of lionfish descend on a reef and eat everything that's on it, uh, that's just not good and it causes what's called a trophic cascade where you have this collapse. The good thing is they're edible. So around here we do eat them to beat them and we have a thriving uh, community of scuba divers and free divers that will hunt this very reef um, by hand and, and call as many as we can. There's so much that the government can do um, and there's so much that citizens can do, but you definitely need that collaboration and cooperation from both ends. The Bermuda Ocean Prosperity Program is a community-led initiative that's in partnership with the government of Bermuda, the Bermuda Institute of Ocean Sciences, and the Waite Institute. What we want to do with BOPP is protect 20% of our surrounding ocean as no-take fisheries replenishment zones, while helping to bolster the blue economy and help with sustainable fishing. We know how important human health is and how it's connected to ocean health. So if we have a healthy ocean, 
we'll have healthy and thriving communities. We're gonna head out to that first patch of reef right there. We call that patch of reef Lindos. And uh, yeah, we'll have a safe dive and come back and uh, report what we see. And hopefully we'll have the GoPro and we'll be able to capture some of that on video. Look, full disclosure, as we geared up to swim out, it was left for me to film the experience. But as I discovered later, I'd filmed the whole thing on the wrong setting. But hey, it'll never wipe the memories. And if you're missing your fill of Bermudan reefs, here's some footage that was captured earlier. And to round off our ocean special, we're going back to hear more from the Deputy Premier of Bermuda about just how SailGP is changing lives on the island. SailGP is a natural fit because our history and our very development as a country has been around the ocean. I know that um, SailGP and others have supported our sailing sporting associations while they've been here, so we're grateful for that. We are very much interested in seeing young people seeing the sea as an economic opportunity as an opportunity for them to build careers through this um, sport on the water, the um, science behind the crafts themselves, the engineering and the architecture and the building methods. If young people can see that all this goes into the sailing of these vessels, if that expands their understanding and knowledge of what's possible through SailGP, that's why I'm grateful that um, events like SailGP can come here and contribute to the economy and contribute those influences to our community. I think it's a great, a great event and a great opportunity. On every episode of Beneath the Surface, two of our sailors face off in our rock challenge. This week, Julius Halstrom versus Katja Salskov Iverson. The game, breaking point. They're on with jokes about the ocean, it's the best of three, and if they can make each other laugh or smile, they win a point. What do you call a lazy crayfish? A slobster. Not funny. Which are the strongest creatures at the sea? Turtles. Mussels. Uh, why are the octopus good in war? Why? Because they're well armed. <laughs> yes, one medal. Yes. <laughs> Why are pirates called pirates? Because they are. Right there, he's strong. What do muscles do on their birthday? They celebrate. Who keeps the ocean clean? The mermaid. That was a laugh. That was a laugh. That was a laugh. Okay. How do you cut the ocean in half? With a seesaw. I would have said swarfish. So how do you make an octopus laugh? Ten kilometers. Because you have ten arms. Ah. Yeah, well done. Well done, Katja. Good fight. Well, as you can see, it's all action here on the island as the teams prepare for the first showdown of SailGP Season 3. If you want to follow that live, you can go to sailgp.com forward slash watch to find out where you can see it in your market. And don't forget to give us a follow on social media at SailGPDen. What does the ocean mean to you? Unlocking its secrets is the last great mystery on Earth. It holds the key to all future. But we know more about the moon than we know about our seas. As CLGP athletes, we have a unique connection to our ocean. It isn't just our racetrack. It colors two thirds of our planet. It gives us the air that we breathe. It drives our weather systems. It creates a living for millions around the world. At Denmark CLGP team, we know the importance from our ocean. And that's why we partner with Brockwell and One Ocean Foundation. During season three, we'll connect world-class sports, global business, and cutting-edge science. 
to further understanding and inspire others to take actions to set a new standard and build a better future. Now is the time. Because healthy seas means a better world for you and me. We are all one ocean. We, we are, are all, all one, one ocean. ocean.